Right then, so if you've been following along so far, you'll be up to this point where we built the first stage of the chassis here. So what we have to do is now look at building the next parts, which is pretty damn easy. So we've got the single object here. As you know, we collapse the, we're going to collapse the mesh from the symmetry because we don't really need to keep the symmetry going anymore. So let's just right-click, convert to editable polygon, or up here, click on editable poly and just collapse all. I'm just going to press Control Z because I didn't have the stack pinned and then click on symmetry and collapse all otherwise you end up with none of your modifiers being in place okay so what I need to do now is a scorpion has eight legs so what I'm going to have is three main legs coming off this and then two at the back connected to the tail connection unit that will also break up the kind of uniform design that we're going to be using here so I'm going to drop into my top viewport pull back just view my model a bit better that way and um, what I want to do is, firstly, center the object, there we are, and I'm going to click and drag this along. Now if we look, these are going over both here and here. So it's up to you if you want to trim them or not. It won't make that much of an effect, though you will possibly get some jaggies. So it might be worthwhile just giving them a trim, just using the quick slice function, like this. So I'm just going to turn on snap to, and doesn't matter where you do it. See? It'll have now just taken those bits there and delete. Now I'm going to turn snap to off because this part here isn't on the grid. Turn off select by polygon and just turn on quick slice again. And I just want to take a line straight down here. Try and keep the line as straight as I possibly can. There we go. And now I should be able to just select these pieces as well and press delete. Now it's best just to preview it in my perspective viewport, make sure I haven't accidentally circumcised more than I should have done. Yep, that's looking groovy. Okay. Time for a quick tribute to some other video tutorials. Hmm, cool, groovy, fab. There we go. Okay, so what I need to do now is copy this across. So, holding down shift. I'm just going to drag this one out until it's in the right position. Now, if your computer is not as powerful as mine, and, uh, you know, God love you, I hope it is, um, then this may take a little bit more effort than I actually put into it, because when you're copying something that's got a few polygons in, it uses up resources. I'm not instancing, I'm just copying. Three copies, there we go. Okay, and this is built as the first section of our main chassis here. Now, I don't need to break this down into three parts, I'm quite happy with it being one part all linked together. But if I'm going to do that, then it might be well getting rid of some of the polygons I'm not going to be using. So, what I'm going to do is press F3, click on the middle section, and then I'm going to right click, go to properties, and let's have a look. I'm going to make this see through. Click OK. There, now I can see the one behind it. So I'm going to click on this, select by polygon, and we can start selecting the polygons we want to just delete like that I'm going to turn around now, do the same on the other side we don't need to do this but it's more efficient if you know what I'm talking about and uh, if you were making a games model you would need to do this so just delete there we go now I'm going to select my middle one again right click, go to properties and stop it being see-through and then the two outer ones here and here, right click, properties, I'm going to make these both see through. So now I can look at my main model in the centre here. There we go. And select these polygons here to get rid of. Then float round and do the same on this side. Try not to move them by the way. It's easier sometimes if you just use the select rather than select and move. There we go. Now, oops, select these parts, go to properties, turn off see through, click OK. There we go. That's pretty cool. As you see now, we've developed from the single chassis that we had into this much more complicated object. Now, I'm going to attach these all together, so I'm going to find the first chassis part, which is this one, and just use the attach tool and we now have a single mesh object. Of 
course, if you're selecting by element, the good thing is we can still select individual parts on this, which is good if you want to add different textures to various parts, especially if you're using procedural ones, because it'll save us an absolute ton of time when it comes to the texturing. Okay, so let's try and work out where the front is now, because we're all starting to get a bit lost, I think. So I'm going to zoom extends all in all viewports. There's our top down view here. So I'm going to zoom this end here, it's the front. So I'll just turn my perspective around. Check my bottom view and my back view. Okay, so in my perspective view here. And what we need to do now is start building the area that we're going to have the tail coming out of, and also build the areas that we're going to have uh, the rear legs attaching to. So, firstly select by element. And I'm going to select these parts here. Oops, make sure I'm selecting the correct parts. So, <coughs> I want that part, that part, that part, and that part. And what I'm going to do is just copy them, just using a shift and drag again. There we go. And I can clone to element, which is useful. Auto object. So now I've got two additional leg placeholders at the back here. So what I also have to build is the area that these are going to attach to off this rear polygon here. So you remember in the last tutorial I used detach and I'd like to use that this time as well. So I'm going to select just these bits here. There we go. And with these bits I just want to click detach. I'm giving a name temporary detached rear. Okay, and now if I just select my temporary detached rear, I'm going to obviously move the pivot point to the middle just to make things a bit easier in the modeling. And then I can hide the chassis. So hide selection. And that leaves us with just one bit that we need to worry about and mess about with now. And this is where we're going to create the rear of our big clanky thing. So I'm going to press F4, I need to see polygons. And first thing I'm going to do is start cutting some new polygons. So, what I want to do is go into, I think, the left viewport. There we are. And in here I'm going to be doing some cutting. So, for our temporary detached rear, I'm going to do a cut straight down here like this and straight down here like this and we're just going to try and develop a kind of more complicated shape as much as much detail as we can kind of put into this for what it essentially is holding on the rear of the tail okay I'm going to drop into perspective so rotate this around And what I'm going to do is select here and here, and I'm going to pull these out. So, I want to use an extrude. Press Ctrl Z. I'm going to extrude them using the row, uh, using the pop-up instead, and get them to come to about that length there. Just before that, click Apply, and bring them in to about there, so they're on either side of that jut there, click apply again, and bring them out one last time to about there, and click OK. Next I'm going to select these top ones, and I'm going to extrude those as well. Not too far though, only to about there, and click OK. Now I want to inset. Now if you look the inset's causing some mad shape there that we don't want. So let's insert by polygon, and as you see now we don't have the mad shape, though we do have a rather nasty mess of vertexes down there that I might want to go and clean up a bit later. Let's click OK. Now we can go back into the extrude modifier again. And what I'm going to do is move those to about there. But look, we've got another 
repair job needed down here. So before we do, I'm going to just go and repair that insert. So I'm going to zoom in a bit. I'm going to have to use a little bit of detective work to try and work out what's gone on here. Which is about all our errors are happening. So, I think that by looking at this we can already see where some of the problem was. And possibly a target world will do these some good. So I'm going to click target world. And bring that down to there. And this down to here. Now if I zoom out, turn it round and zoom in again, you'll see that we've got a much better, more even distribution of these vertexes. So if I click Extrude, and I can even insert these without getting nasty errors as well now. I'm going to extrude these in as well. There we go. And I'm going to move this around a little bit, because I want to press F3 and see the vertex is inside so that I can select them and just pull them back a little bit like that just gives us a nice shape remember it's all about ergonomics guys make it look good your client requires it if you're lucky enough to have a client that is now because of the shape here I'm going to do a where is it? here we are I want to do a very quick target weld just to clean up this shape a little bit there we are now if I rotate it you'll see that because I've taken away that vertex there the inside angles back properly rather than how it was angling back okay now we have to look at the detailing on this object already and uh, I think this is a good point to start looking at symmetry modifier, even though we've been messing around with both sides. We do have a lot of stuff to do, and moving on to symmetry is going to be a lot easier. So I'm just going to select this entire half here. Now if you look I've selected too much there, so... Deselect the bits I've accidentally selected. You don't want to delete too many bits by mistake, believe me. You end up with no model left. Okay, deselect that piece. Right, just click delete, and it's gone. Zoom out. And now we can start doing our modifications to this piece here. Now, I'm going to need an area here for this one as well, so I'm going to do a quick cut. Straight down. And again. There we are. Now, if I select both these polygons simultaneously, there and there, and insert them a little, then I'm going to use the scale tool to scale them down until they become more box shaped, and then just move them up a bit. Okay, and now I'm going to extrude them in by about so much, and then extrude them out by a very small amount and just click OK and then do a mesh smooth you've seen me do this in the previous ones you know this should not come as a surprise to you what I'm doing here ok just make an attachment bolt basically so extrude it out there we go so now we have a nice attachment bolt for this kind of grip thing that goes on the leg Okay, now making it look more excitingly sci-fi yet chaotically insane at the same time. I seem to do a lot of things that look chaotically insane. I'm sure that's a reflection of my personality in some way, but if you want to write in and make comment on it, feel free. And I'll ban you from the forums. <laughs> okay, so we want to make a target weld from here across to here. By the way, if you're not used to the 3D palace sense of humour, drop by and grab some of our other tutorial videos. We make a point of trying to have a nice, relaxed, fun family atmosphere. Family atmosphere being one for, obviously, 18-year-olds and over. And so not really family atmosphere at all. Okay, so we've got that piece there looking okay. 
yeah that's quite fruity so what we want to do now is start putting the connection between this piece and this piece over here which of course means you guessed it pipes this model is absolutely covered in pipes hell you'd think it was steam driven so I'm going to cut one down straight here to here no cut there which makes me suspect the cut's gone on the other side Hmm. no it hasn't that makes a nice change Okay. We want a cut to come down from here to here. Now sometimes the cut modifier can be a complete nuisance and it's easier to select the polygon itself and then use a quick slice by poly. There we are. Turn quick slice off, turn that off. Now we've got a nice line here. No point in wasting it. So I'll just drag it to the left. There we go. And we've got this nice square here that I can use for the creation of. So let's see what a tessellate is going to do, whether it's even enough to use a tessellate. And it is. Good. That means we can have two pipes or even four pipes. Remember the more detail you put in at this stage the better. And um, We've got a bit of a th running theme for our object anyway with the pipe work. So inset. Inset by polygon as you saw before. So get these to a nice height. There we go. Click OK. And I'm going to extrude these inwards now I'm going to bevel them a tiny bit up and in just to get an interesting shape when I do that now I'm going to grow and then I'm going to deselect the inside polys one two three four six seven eight and these ones and these fellows over here I'm just holding down control when I'm doing this if you came this far and don't realize that's what I'm doing it's time to go back to part one in fact, how the hell have you managed to get this far in the tutorial? Or are you just one of those people who collects tutorials? We know the type. OK, hinge from edge. I'm going to click the settings button beside it. Pick our hinge and we want this one. Now we're going to make the angle all the way up 90 degrees. Oh, there we go. And let's rotate around our model and see what's going on. Now then, if you look at these ones here, they're angling too much. Even if I put in a pile of segments, it's still angling a little bit too much. It's kind of, it's actually bisecting these polygons here, which means that I'm going to have to do a minor repair job if I want to keep them that way. However, apart from that, they actually seem to be doing OK, so what I'm going to do is keep them. I'm going to click OK, and then I'm going to use an extrude on them and just get them to bisect the top until they're gone. Then delete the polygons. And let's have a look. Yeah, they fitted nicely. So let's sort out these nasty bisecting lines over here. Select by line, and I want that one. There. And there. And I'm going to use the Move tool and just move them down. There we go. And now they're no longer bisecting. OK. So here, with these pieces, I would like 3D Studio Max to let me do a cut from there to there, and it has. Hooray for discreet. And uh, I'm just going to get rid of that extra vertex, because I don't think I really need it. So, target world it away. There we go. Now select by polygon, and I want to select these pieces. Now, I should really add another cut to the top there if I'm putting in detail, so. There we go. Right click, and I should have a vertex all the way over there that I can move. There we go. And I'll try and do another cut at the bottom. You can see what I'm doing here. I'm just creating polygons that I need to work with. It's a lot easier than tessellating an entire mass object. I mean, you should only really use tessellate when you absolutely have to. Or, you know, if you've got a client that comes in and says, God damn it, I want everything tessellated and I want it done now. In which case you should definitely consider getting another client. I mean, you know. Okay, so extrude this in. There we go. And I think I'll hinge from edge as well, because I'm in a hinging mood. There we go. Just do about there. Just adds in a nice little element of detail. We don't know what it does, but it looks fun. OK, now we've got this nice flat area here. Still not sure whether it's going to be visible or not, but 
as it's here we should do something to it so why don't we add some nice detail to it using standard primitives and auto grid so just putting in some minor details and some cylinders and things a little cylinder here perhaps and then another box coming off from here all the way along to here and click and drag make a couple of copies Okay, then we can just add them in it all works out in the long run, we don't know what they are, maybe they're cooling fins, who knows but it looks good when you're, viewing the mo when you're starting to view the object from a bit of a distance there we are cunning, very cunning okay so we've got this piece along the top here, what are we going to do with that? Well, you know what the theme is for this object obviously, it's like pipe work and what would happen if steam met high yield engineering um, I mean we've been keeping with the whole pipes aspect and it'd be interesting to carry that over so we can make quite an interesting base for this already just by if I'm going to use a cut I think it's probably better to go into the top viewport which is here there we go and click on zoom extents by object we're going to make a cut just across from here to here and yet again remember what I did last time I selected by poly and used quick slice just going to use the snap to settings because I just want to cut it straight down there see I'm going to cut a nice straight polygon here so selecting by poly turn off snap to we select that one and that one there I'm going to extrude them out and up and this is where we're going to have some exciting yet pointless pipe work remember, you know, people have said history is bunk if you look closely you'll discover that most sci-fi is extremely bunk and I know that I'm going to receive hate mail from Trekkies of the world over uh, I'm not even going to comment anymore on that but when you're making science fiction, the thing you've got to remember is I mean, in sci-fi you'd think they'd make extraordinary fantastic shielding that would cover all the engine parts in sci-fi what you've got to remember is that the engine always goes on the outside shields are weird little things that hang above the bridge and can be easily blown up I don't know why, it's some sort of unwritten rule I think it's just mass stupidity personally by whoever designs it whoever, you know, is in charge obviously in the future but ours is not to speculate So enough of my mad ranting I'm going to create a cylinder so I'm just going to build it here and pull this out I'm going to create some nice pipe work ok we're going to right click that convert it to an editable polygon and uh, before I do that actually I'm going to reduce the height segments then convert it to an editable polygon and then what I'm going to do is select this inside poly here and inset it now I want to extrude it back and then inset it just a tiny bit again and then I'm going to extrude it out now the main reason that I've uh, left a nice gap between the two is for those who aren't in the know so that when I'm using final render or mental ray or any other form of GI plugin, even Shudder, Max's own built-in lighting stuff, then I'll be able to get some nice effects from that. I'll actually have the gap around the outside. So I'm just going to click OK. I've made this weird pissony thing. And I'm going to drag and copy. So whoop, I'm just cancel that. Press Control Z. I'm just going to move this across, holding down shift. And I think we should make three copies. There we go select all four and move them to a nice central position there we are okay so now I can attach these one two three four and I'm going to rotate round and let's make the welcoming area for these to be in here I'm just going to zoom by object Uh, 
I insert this there we go and I'm just going to push this bit down oops there we go so that goes to about there just going to increase the scale this way a bit and now I can extrude it in you knew I was going to extrude that in though didn't you so there we go we're going to extrude that in and if we look at tessellate it's actually more or less being our friend today so we've got four nice patterns that we can use here with a little bit a little bit of repair work if we want to or we can keep this massive amount of polygons choice is really up to you there is a way of dealing with this now what you can do of course is let's get my select tools if I just select these four here I can delete them then just use a border tool and cap them again and it's going to make a single poly and I can do that for all of these and then stick another cap on I mean these are just cheats but in 3D you know cheating helps so there we go cap that again let's move along a bit so take this one out and then stick another cap in and feel free to make cap jokes by the way like I pop a cap in you model or I'm sure that sounds funnier with an American accent of course possibly a Harlem one I don't know I'm English I don't know about these things okay just click this border this border damn you okay well come on that's it and just click cap there we go and now I'm able to utilize these areas zoom in a bit so if I select all four I can inset just by a small bit by polygon then extrude them in then inset them again and we're just going for the mad science fiction look and extrude them out like that I think I'll just move them all slightly to the right there we go and that should bisect with these fellows quite nicely turn that off and let's zoom out and see how we're doing so far okay we're getting some good shapes there so how about another big tube? You know we all like pipe work. Go Ted, we love pipe work. That's right. So let's build a big pipe up here. Okay, click on the top. Insert again. If anyone can work out what all these pipes do, maybe an engineering student can, you know, think of something for us. Oh yeah, that pipe makes real sense. I'm just going to extrude this twice, in and out. Just doing it quick and cheap. Hit mesh smooth, nice round shape grow it. Extrude it up and then shrink so we've got this nice pipe here and we're going to just use a simple oh, scratch my nose hinge from edge again pick my hinge and I'm going to pick this one so give it an angle of about... oh hang on How have I got them? yep hinge from edge pick my hinge this one and give it a positive angle of about 90 degrees there we go, so 90 degrees there click OK, Oop, reduce the segments now if I'm viewing this from the top let's make sure it's in the right place now if we look it's curving down rather too much there for my liking so I'm going to cancel that off so let's go over here I'm going to have to build a temporary line just to do it off so what I can do is just select a line drag it up, oops hang on Hold down shift and drag it up. Oof. I'll just use polygon actually. Just drag this polygon up here. Click OK and I can just drag it around. And I can use this as a kind of central point to do my work from. So 
just going to get that roughly aligned so that the top's in the middle. It's just a tool, nothing else. I'll delete it when I'm finished. But it comes in handy if I'm going to do what I'm about to do here, which is select all these, use a hinge from edge, pick my hinge, and I've got this one. And now if we look, the pipe's actually looking OK, as opposed to how it was looking a minute ago. OK, so if I click OK, and what I'm going to do is just do manual beveling here. There, let's move that out a bit. And then down again. There we go. Now if I just move this around, I just want to keep this in line with it. So I'm just going to move that, just align this piece here. There we go. Don't need to move it much, obviously. Now move around. Select these four pieces here. Deselect this one. And it's time for another hinge from edge. Use this hinge here. And as you see, it's kind of completing the circle. Moving straight down into that area there. So click OK. And now we can select this polygon and just get rid of it. Go around this side. We're going to pick these four again. And we can build the final stand receive over here. Damn it, Jim, I'm an artist, not an engineer. Even though I know there's a direct correlation between the two of them, obviously. Just drag it through the bottom there. And delete that leftover polygon. But press F3, that's actually quite far down, so... I think I'll just move these up a little bit. There we go. And I'm going to move this up. There we are. And now I'm just going to do a few random bevels. There we are. Yep, that's OK. Now then, over here, we've got this piece. And I think this is one of those pieces where it's going to be useful to put a quick tessellate in there. Reason being, I can then select by vertex and bring them out like that. There we go. OK, so we've got our pipes running through there. We're not exactly certain what they do, but we're all very sure it's something important. So I think maybe it's time to build our exhausts, because presumably these feed through from some sort of an exhaust...